In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily apply HTV to fabric with just a regular household iron. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants your Cricut and crafting channel, where I post Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to use your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because you, my friend, do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute, especially during the month of December because during December, we are doing the 12 days of craftmas here on this channel. And basically what that means is throughout the course of December, there is going to be 12 different videos, 12 different episodes that are all going to be Christmas or holiday themed, and they're all going to be done with a Cricut cutting machine. Now, not only that, but each of these 12 episodes is a brand new chance for you to get registered to win a huge Cricut bundle. And I am so excited for this, you all, because I am giving away a Cricut maker, as well as a Cricut Joy. So whoever this all goes to, whoever the winner is, the hope is that they'll actually be able to give away one of these machines to a friend, pay it forward, and just spread some love and kindness because we all know that 2020 needs all that that it can get. Now, the way that you actually get registered to win is by watching each of these episodes from the very beginning all the way up until the very end because in each episode is a hidden holiday or Christmas themed phrase. And basically, this phrase is going to be popping up one word at a time throughout the course of a video. So once you see a little word pop up, jot it down, keep watching. And once you see the next one, jot that down as well and just keep on going all the way up until the very end of the video. And if you're in the United States after the video is over, all the way up until Christmas day, you can text that hidden phrase to me. You can just text it to 502-878-7189. If you're not already a member of my texting community, you'll have to follow a couple of prompts after that just to get registered into my texting community. But once you do that, you'll be good and registered. Now, here's the thing. If you are not in the United States, I have not forgotten about you. Um, I know that some people have had issues in the past if you're outside of the US joining my texting community, and I don't want that. <laughs> I wanna make sure that this is a level playing field for everyone. So if you're outside of the US, you can basically send in your, your hidden phrase to mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. And remember, that is only, only, only if you are outside of the United States. All right, so now on to today's project, which I am so excited about because y'all, I cannot tell you how many times I have been asked to make a video concerning doing HTV or iron on vinyl with just a regular household iron. And here's the thing, just in full transparency, I don't really recommend this method. It's not the best method out there, that's for sure. You can obviously use a Cricut Easy Press or even better, like a more professional heat press. However, if all you have is a household iron, I am gonna definitely show you how to make that work for you. So first things first, we are obviously gonna need a Cricut cutting machine. In reality, you can use any cutting machine. It, it doesn't have to be just specifically a Cricut, but y'all already know that that is what I specialize in. So I am definitely using a Cricut cutting machine and I will be using my Cricut Maker because it's already out here on my desk, but by all means, you can use any Cricut cutting machine. Next up, you'll also obviously need a household iron, obviously. <laughs> and I'm using this one right here. We actually got this given to us as a gift some years back. And to be honest, um, we don't really iron around here. So this thing has basically just been sitting. We're the more kind of like just throw the clothes into the dryer, put it on the heat cycle, throw in an ice cube or two and let it do its thing. But you know, whatever works, right? We are also going to obviously need some HTV, right? Now HTV stands for heat transfer vinyl. Now there are companies out there like Cricut themselves that try to differentiate themselves from the other brands. And so they call their version of that iron on vinyl. However, tomato, tomato, it, it, it does the same thing. Although I will say this, not all HTV or iron on, whatever you want to call it, not all of it is created equal. There is a bunch of different types of quality out there. So just, just be forewarned. 
Now y'all already know that I am a huge Caesar fanboy. I love Caesar products, but I am also a humongous fan of StarCraft Softflex HTV. This stuff is amazing, truthfully amazing. I would even say that this is like the same exact type of quality as what you would get with a Caesar Easy Weed. And it's even a little bit more affordable, you guys. It blends beautifully with shirts or garments or whatever surface you're applying it to. And it has a super, super soft matte finish. But probably most importantly, at least for our purposes today, this also applies at a lower temperature for a lower period of time. So with Caesar Easy Weed, it applies at 300 in five degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. The StarCraft SoftFlex, however, applies at 285 degrees for eight to 10 seconds. Now, whenever we're working with something that's a little bit less reliable, like a household iron right here, that extra 20 degrees and like five, seven seconds or so could make a bigger difference than what you would be inclined to think. Now, don't get me wrong, you can absolutely apply Caesar Easy Weed uh, with a household iron. I just think for beginners, StarCraft SoftFlex is gonna be the best bet and you're still gonna get the exact same type of quality and you may like the finish even more. I'm just saying. Now we are also going to obviously need a cover sheet for our HTV. Now you can use parchment paper for this. However, I, I really prefer using a Teflon sheet. Not only is it reusable, but it also kind of helps disperse and dissipate the heat a little bit more than what parchment paper does. So, I mean, I recommend a Teflon sheet. However, if all you have is parchment paper, that'll do the trick as well. Now we are gonna have to apply some pretty firm pressure with our household iron to make all this work you do not want to be applying the HTV to your garment or to your surface on top of an ironing board. <laughs> you want an actual tabletop that you can really kind of lay into and apply the pressure. Heck, if you need to, lay it out on the floor and do it that way. However, if you do not have a surface that would be heat resistant, then I recommend actually getting a silicone mat like this right here. This is actually used for baking. However, this will actually help dissipate that heat as well. So I'm actually gonna be applying my HTV to my surface over top of this right here. We are also going to need a surface to apply all this to, right? And I'm actually gonna be using this little oven mitt right here from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. This will make a super, super cute, super affordable last minute gift if you need one. I have seen so many people couple this with a little packet of Betty Crocker cake mix or cookie mix, throw in this little Betty Crocker spatula right here and with it. And heck, I mean, you can even throw in a little DVD for movie night as well if you wanted to. If you don't wanna use an oven mitt, you don't have to. You can do the same exact process with a stocking or really anything that you want. Oh, and I almost forgot that we're also gonna need an SVG cut file for our design. So let's hop over to designbundles.net and I'll show you the one that we're using today. All right, so here is the SVG bundle that we are using for today's project and I am in love with this. So let's take a look at this real quick. There is 20 designs and these are the cutest. Like I love these so much. And this right here is actually the one that I'm using today. I, I love this, but let's go ahead and just kind of scroll through and take a look at all of them. These are so freaking adorable. Like I absolutely love this, you guys. Now it is normally six bucks. It is currently marked down half off to $3. As always, I can't make any promises of what that price is gonna be by the time that you actually go and check it out yourself. But um, all I know is that right now it's $3 and for 20 designs, that's really, really, really not a bad price at all. So let's go ahead and hop over to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see, I already have it uploaded. If you're not entirely sure how to download files from Design Bundles and get them up into Cricut Design Space, I will link a video for you on that right up here, as well as down in that description box below. Now we are doing this design right here. It is gonna be one solid color design. So if you'll take a look over here at the right hand side of the page to the layers panel, all of these layers is obviously not, uh, it's, it's not needed. <laughs> So I'm gonna come back up here, make sure that all of this is selected like so. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And weld does what it sounds like it's gonna do. It's gonna weld or merge or fuse um, all of those layers into one solid layer, as we can see right here in that layers panel. All right, so now what we need to do is actually resize this to fit onto our surface, right? So let me grab our oven mitt. And I am also just grabbing my measuring tape right here. And we're basically just gonna kind of get an idea of how big we want our design to be on this oven mitt. I normally do templates, I know, but um, a shape like this one right here is gonna be a, a little difficult for a template. So let me just kind of get an idea. We'll measure it out and go from there. 
All right, so I think for the width, we can get by with around four inches wide. So let me just plug those numbers into Cricut Design Space and we'll see what it gives us. All right, so our design right here is already selected. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says size. And I'm gonna clear out the numbers next to the width. I'm gonna put in four, hit enter. And since that padlock is locked, it went ahead and changed the height to be the same proportion as the width. There we go, I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. All right, so since we are using HTV, in 99.9% .9 of cases, you will need to mirror your HTV. So I'm gonna come right over here to the left-hand side of the screen and click on this little mirror tab right there. And then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select continue. And for my base material setting, I am gonna cut this out on everyday iron-on. And I am gonna leave my pressure set to default. However, if you are working with a new material, always, always, always do test cuts first before you commit to cutting out a larger design. Typically for that, I actually just insert a shape onto my canvas, resize it down to around half an inch or so, and then I proceed to cut it out, weed it out, make sure that everything goes good before I commit to a larger design. And I know that it can be annoying, but I promise you that's gonna save you so much time and frustration and headache and money in the future. All right, so another thing to know about HTV is that in 99.9% .9 of cases, the shinier side or the smoother side will go face down onto the cutting mat. So I don't know if you can tell on camera or not, but this right here is definitely the shinier side. And then this side right here is more of a matte or dull side. You can definitely tell the difference or feel the difference. And the shiny side will go face down onto the cutting mat. All right, so now to actually remove our HTV from our cutting mat, what I like to do is actually flip my mat over and then peel my mat away from the HTV instead of the other way around, just to help prevent any damage from occurring to our material. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim out our design and get started weeding. All right, so to weed out our design, I am of course using my favorite weeding tool of all time, which is this pin pin weeding tool right here. This thing is basically magic. I love it. Now, just to help me out just a little bit with weeding out all the little cavities inside of each of these letters, what I like to do is just grab a lint roller, just like this one right here, and just leave this sitting out on my desk. And as I'm weeding through everything, I just flick those little bits and bobs right there onto the lint roller. And once I'm completely done, I'll just peel off and throw in the garbage. All right, so now we have everything all weeded out as you can see right here. So now what we're actually gonna do is just apply this to our oven mitt. All right, so now for our iron settings. Now on most irons, the setting for cotton should technically get around 400 degrees in some areas and the settings for wool, polyester, and silk, those should each get around 300 degrees or so as well, albeit in just some certain areas. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that is because the heating elements in household irons are not fully reliable. It could be 400 degrees in one area and then 200 degrees in an entirely different area. And that's really why so many people turn to using an actual heat press or an easy press. And that's because of the even heating element inside of those machines. Now, as far as our project today, we are using StarCraft SoftFlex, which the normal heat setting should be around 285 degrees or so for eight to 10 seconds. So I'm actually just gonna set this on the wool setting. So that should be close to around 300 or so, give or take, obviously. And that should do the trick for us beautifully. But first things first, we are gonna start off with preheating our fabric. This is so freaking important you guys. You always, always, always want to do this because you do not want to risk any moisture hanging out inside of the fabric and then potentially ruining your HTV. Moisture and HTV does not mix. It does not get along very well. And if there's any moisture inside of that fabric, that could potentially cause that HTV to not completely seal or adhere to that surface below it and could cause some issues down the road or maybe even more immediately. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my iron and then just press over this area for about 10, 15 seconds or so. All right, so that should be good. Now let me go ahead and grab my HTV right here. And let's just go ahead and position this wherever we want it to be on our surface. 
All right, so I'm really liking how that's looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Teflon sheet and we're gonna use this as a cover sheet. Again, if you don't have a Teflon sheet, don't sweat it. You can always use parchment paper. Just me personally, I prefer a Teflon sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and just cover this up. Now you do not wanna be ironing this on in the same way that you'd be ironing a pair of khakis. Khakis? You don't wanna be moving it all around. You wanna press and hold pressure, firm, firm pressure. We're gonna probably gonna hold pressure on this for about 10 to 15 seconds or so. Once that time frame is done, we're gonna lift straight up and then press over the other part of the design until we have the entire design covered. Again, pressure is very important with this, you guys. If you need to set this up on a lower table or even on the floor to get the pressure that you need, it'll be worth it, I promise. Okay, so the time frame is done on that. I'm gonna lift straight up and then move it to make sure we have both sides of our design completely covered. So I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. And then again, we'll do another 10, 15 seconds or so. All right, so now that we've completely pressed that entire design, I'm just gonna go ahead and just move this a little bit back and forth across the design. Again, these irons do not heat evenly and you really wanna make sure that that heat gets evenly dispersed over the entire design. And again, you only wanna be doing this moving back and forth after it's been completely pressed. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and lift off the Teflon sheet and very slowly, very, very carefully, I'm gonna start pulling away this carrier sheet. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing slowly and carefully is because if any little piece of HTV is wanting to pull up with the carrier sheet, you need to immediately lay the carrier sheet back down, cover it back up and press again. You may need more pressure or just more heat. All right, so that's looking good so far, but we still need to cover this back up because it's still not fully adhered. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this again and then just fully press right here in the center of this design and hold good firm pressure, probably do about another 10 to 15 seconds. Y'all, I am absolutely obsessed with how this turned out. Like this is so soft, it's so smooth. It blends in with the fabric beautifully. It honestly feels like it's screen printed on or like just a part of the fabric in general. Like it's so freaking nice. It's not heavy, it's not shiny, it's not glossy. It's just nice, it's matte, it, it almost melts into the fabric. It's just, it's amazing all the way around. And this is why I love StarCraft SoftFlex HTV so much. Not to mention, it just makes it super, super easy to use with a household iron, in my own personal opinion. But what really matters here is what you all thought of it. So if you all liked today's episode, or if you learned something new, consider stamping that like button, as well as dropping a comment down in the comments section below. As always, both of those things help me out tremendously here on YouTube. And I honestly, I just cannot thank you enough. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here to this channel and you're just trying to figure out how to use your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may wanna consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute. Not to mention all of this month, we are doing Craftmas, the 12 days of Craftmas. So, at this point, you should have a whole list of words that create some hidden Christmas or holiday themed phrase. And all you have to do now is just text that in to me at 502-878-7189. Or if you're outside of the States and only if you are outside of the States, email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching today's episode. It truly means the world to me. I wish I could express into words exactly how much it means to me. I just so extremely grateful for each and every single one of you all. And until next time, stay crafty.